the biggest sex scandal in sports, and few people are listening. Kristaps Przingis feels snubbed. D'Angelo Russell makes a return. Billy Preston following the big baller brand playbook. Trey rumors surround Kemba Walker. New York Knicks center and his canter trolls LeBron James. Jalen Brown is in our athlete spotlight. All that and more on What's the 401 Sports, coming right up. Welcome to this week's edition of What's the 401 Sports. I'm Keisha Wilson. I'm Mike McDonald. Mike, it's good to see you. Of course, you too, Keisha. And all our friends out there. So let's just get right to what's popping. Absolutely, Keisha. We start with the Cleveland Cavs, who have been slumping as of late. Now, at, at this moment, they are third in the Eastern Conference, but they have a, had a devastating loss over the weekend to the OKC Thunder, losing 148 to 124. Actually, the Cavs are really one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA this season, Keisha. So I ask you, there is no question that this team is in trouble right now, but when we look into our crystal ball, can the Cavs actually rebound and make it to the NBA Finals this year? Mike, Cleveland is a hot mess right now, and what's happening is a lot of this, finger pointing. And they recently had a team meeting, and they just pointed fingers. Kevin Love seemingly got the brunt of it. And if the Cavs want to even have uh, a chance of making it out of the East, because it, that's not even a lock anymore, given the way, the way that they're playing right now, they need to stop pointing fingers at each other. Everybody take responsibility for their actions and then use that energy to figure out how to come together and do this. And I think one of the things that I could be problematic is that the Cavaliers have always, well, at least while LeBron has been back on the team, for this uh, stint, that they've operated under the philosophy, philosophy that because we have LeBron, everything's going to be all right. But there's simple mathematics here. LeBron is one person. He cannot successfully beat five people. And even though his talents are otherworldly, and you can maybe even count him as two, two and a half players, it's still less than five. And it's not going it, to, he can't get it done in a seven game series like, by himself against five people. So they, Everybody's talking about how LeBron can turn it on, but what about the rest of his, his cast? J.R. Smith is residing in Strugglesville right now. He's averaging seven points per game as a starter. Isaiah Thomas, he's getting himself acclimated into the lineup. Jay Crowder, I, I haven't really seen him be the player that he was in Boston, and I'm really looking for a turnaround from him. And then I just think that... They have to play defense. They have to play defense. Their defense is terrible. I could put up a double-double against this defense. I'm pretty certain of it. I saw the game against the OKC Thunder, and what was concerning was that they, the body language of the Cavs, they just looked uninspired. They just looked lost, confused. LeBron looked dejected. He didn't even finish the game. And that was where he had a chance to, to reach 30,000 points and he made it to 18. So have shown the ability to pull itself together and get on a nice hot streak. They had a nice win streak going at one point this season. So they can turn around, but it's really going to take a concerted effort on everybody and not just relying on LeBron James. Yeah, I think that this function that they have, I think the way that it shows is that I understand that some of the players on the team have an issue with what happened with Kevin Love, who sort of called in sick, if you will. I have no issue with this team having a team meeting, calling out one of their players, but my my take on this is that this, that shouldn't have been leaked to the media. They should have been able to keep that in-house. I think one of the things that's going to happen here, obviously the guy who's taking a lot of the criticism has been Teron Liu, and I don't necessarily think that's fair because he's had a lot on his plate ever since he's tried to come in and really clean up David Blatt's mess, and you know the Cavs have problems when even David Blatt, I think he posted some cryptic tweet recently uh, taking a shot at the Cavaliers. When it comes down to it, I think that this team will be able to regroup. Let's face it, they are still in the Eastern Conference, which gives them a much easier shot to go ahead and represent the East and face off with whoever it might be, most likely the Cleveland uh, or the Golden State Warriors. So I think when it comes down to it, that the Cavs will wind up winning the Eastern Conference. It's not going to be easy, and they have a lot of work cut out for themselves. And right now it doesn't look good, but I think in the next two to three months they will find a way to bounce back. I'd be interested in to see what the Cavs do before the, the trade deadline that's coming up and see if they can really get some pieces to help push them over the edge because the teams are shortening the gap. Absolutely. 
Isha, sticking with the NBA, the all-star captains and starters have been announced. Are you satisfied with the selection so far? Well, Mike, when they announced the starters, I was initially surprised that Russell Westbrook wasn't a starter. And I think that's just because I have an affinity towards him. But it's really hard, um, stiff competition when you have Steph Curry and James Harden playing the, the same position. So um, I, I was surprised, but I am certain that he'll be a reserve, so he won't be left out on the All-Star team. And I was really happy to see Joel Embiid they, as a starter. He's become one of my new favorite people in the NBA. I just think he's a ton of fun. He's obviously very talented. He's just a great giver of quotes, and I just can't wait to see what he puts on social media as he goes through his first All-Star game ever. I mean, he just already told the, the media that he is not double backing with Rihanna because he tried to kick his game. He shot his shot. She told him, come back as an All-Star. And he's like, well, I don't need to go back now. It's on to the next one. I mean, this guy is a gem. And But I think the biggest surprise for me was the NBA's decision not to televise this new format. So it's not going to be... East versus West, it's captains Steph Curry and LBJ, Kim James, choosing their teams from the pool of starters and reserves. And that's not going to be televised. And I'm going to be really, I, I'm surprised about that because there's just so many different storylines at play. Steph Curry, is he only going to choose his Warriors team? Will Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook end up on the same team? Will LeBron James pick Kyrie Irving? It, I mean, there's so much at, at play here that I, I'm kind of sad that we don't get to see it. I like what you pointed out, though. I think that the, the NBA has done a good job here really rejuvenating the whole feel for the All-Star game. Let's face it, this is a tough time for the NBA in the middle of Feb. We're leading into February where, you know, football is finishing and, of course, March Madness is just around the corner. And when you wind down towards the regular season, you want to get people talking about the NBA and what better way to get a little controversy going with some of these All-Star selections. As far as what you pointed out with Embiid, absolutely. I mean, this is a guy that really had some injuries, struggled a little bit early in his career, and he has, without a doubt, been able to turn things around. And I think... Keisha, I agree with you 100%. He deserves uh, this this starting um, job that he's received here. And I think with the Western Conference, it's almost like apples and oranges. You know, it's there's so much talent that, yeah, should Russell Westbrook be in there? Well, you know what? They struggled so much early on at the beginning of the year that I don't have any gripes with that. So I think the big thing going forward is it is going to be a lot of fun to see how all of this does play out as we get ready for the All-Star game. Well, don't go anywhere because when we return, we have more of what's popping. The NBA trade deadline is approaching and it looks like the Charlotte Hornets are ready to trade Kemba Walker. While one team is preparing to move on from a player, another team is trying to figure out how to manage a newly acquired one. According to the score, LaMelo Ball is giving his head coach fits as he plays in the LKL, which is a premier men's basketball league in Lithuania. Meanwhile, back in the States, hip-hop artist Kendrick Lamar's record label recently opened a sports division and its new client is LSU running back Derek Juice. New York Knicks center Ennis Cantor has got his troll game strong. He recently trolled LeBron James on Twitter after the Cavs suffered the 148-124 loss to OKC. Cantor tweeted, quote, 148, period, hashtag strive for greatness. End quote. Another one bites the dust. Milwaukee Bucks head coach Jason Kidd has been relieved of his head coaching duties in Milwaukee. Even the Greek freak couldn't save him. And last and certainly not least, the GOAT grabbed another one. Zion Williamson, one of the top high school basketball prospects in the country, announced his commitment to play at Duke University next season. With the signing, Coach K has successfully signed the number one, the number two, and number three prospect in ESPN's top 100. Go Devils! My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 401 Sports. New York Giants safety and University of Alabama alum Landon Collins along with other university-affiliated athletes took to Twitter in response to racist remarks made by Harley Barber, a member of the Alpha Phi sorority and also a student at the University of Alabama. 
Holly Barber made racist videos and released them on social media during Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, Colin says in part, quote, Alpha Phi, be wary of the company you keep for they are a reflection of who you are or who you want to be. Harley Barber didn't wake up this morning and decide to spew racist rhetoric for the first time in her life. Therefore, I believe I speak on behalf of my brothers and myself when I say the Bama football team does not need the support, cheers, or high fives of anyone who condones this type of intolerant, hateful behavior. Hashtag built by Bama, end quote. Both the university and the sorority expelled Barber, and she has returned to New Jersey, and she recently told the New York Post, quote, I did something really, really bad. I don't know what to do, and I feel horrible. I'm wrong, and there's just no excuse for what I did, end quote. Landon Collins said that he'd be willing to speak with Barber. And so, Mike, I just want to know, do you think that Collins should reach out to her? Does he need to do this? Or the punishment that Barber received, is that enough for her to really realize the error of her ways? As far as Landon Collins, I think, he doesn't necessarily have to or should meet with this young girl, um, but I commend him for taking action here and going out and speaking his mind. Look, you, in a situation like this, do you want to antagonize the people that are spewing out this hatred, or do you really want to become part of the solution? And, and, some, you know, and I think that Collins here, I commend him. I think that you know, by going out and saying this, and taking a stand, I, I really got to give the guy a lot of respect for that. As far as this young lady is concerned, to me, one of the big surprises that I took from this story was uh, not necessarily this is some girl from Huntsville or Mobile, Alabama. She's from New Jersey. And I thought to me, now that just shows you that this growing level of hatred that's festering throughout this country, it's everywhere. It's permeated everywhere. This young lady has absolutely, you could just tell, I'm not even going to say what her Instagram name was or whatever it was, Snapchat name, um, but it, it just shows that this is a young lady that has absolutely no respect for herself. She has no respect for the black community. She has no respect for her sorority sisters or the college that she went to, Alabama. Uh, and the last thing that I'll say is, for me, I did watch the video. It's thing, when things like this happen, it's very uncomfortable for me to watch, but just preparing for the show, I figured I would watch the two separate videos that this girl had wound up posting, and they were really, really sickening and disturbing. And the sad part is, I bet you that some of these sorority, and I don't want to call out the sorority itself, I bet you that some of her friends, while this was all happening, were probably laughing. I think that's a sad part out of all of this. Like you, Mike, I commend Landon Collins for wanting to speak to her because at, at this point, I'm just so ready to toss people like Barber, Barber and people of her ilk to the side and cast them off from society. Um, but So it it's shows what kind of character he has to be willing to uh, sit down with her because, you know, maybe he can have a conversation that will spark a change in her and then she can become an ally in the fight against racism, but I just don't know what it takes to, to change what someone's heart dictates. So, um, you know, if, if he can do it and, and make a difference, more, you know, more power to him. You know, I'm just embarrassed that this girl is from my home state of New Jersey. Like, that, the fact that she's connected to New Jersey is terrible, and she's going to pay the price because a quick Google search of her name by any potential universities or employers will let them know what kind of person she really is. Well, Keisha, we move on to another very disturbing story and the statements made by Olympic gymnast at Dr. Larry Nasser's sentencing hearing at a Michigan State Court for sexually abusing more than 100 girls and women. And this was heart-wrenching and compelling stuff. Now, the Me Too movement started with Hollywood and it spread like wildfire. Why do you think, Keisha, that this has sort of gained some little attention in one of the biggest sex scandals in the United States history, sports history? Well, Mike, again, we see that women's sports takes a backseat to the men. And what further compounds this is that gymnastics is not a really big name sport like basketball, softball, football. And pe people normally tend to pay attention to gymnastics every four years when the Summer Olympics comes around. But going even deeper, when I was thinking about this, I thought how this has really highlighted how minimalized trauma to women is treated uh, is is viewed in America because I was th I automatically thought about Penn State the Penn State football team that, that recently went through a huge sex scandal where one of its coaches was accused and convicted of sexually molesting 
a ton of young men and there was no shortage of coverage we knew everything practically there was a big report uh, we we just knew details that we didn't even want any want to know because they were, they were disgusting but when you juxtapose Penn State and what happened in women's gymnastics it's the same thing you had abuse by trusted officials you had institutionalized cover-ups and turning the blind eye the only difference is that the gender of the victims change and so I think it's really sad that once again women are our experiences our bodies are just thought of as property and and what happens to us doesn't ring as loud as what happens to men so I really hope that this would uh, spark a change and I, I would like to see Ali Raceman and Simone Biles who are big names and faces of women's gymnastics and who have publicly come forward to say that they were abused by Nasser take this opportunity maybe to, to start bringing about reform because there seems to be re little regulation in women's gymnastics and reading a little more the training is so isolated that this it, it sets the stage for something like this to happen again I think with, you know, with Nasser, I think one of the things is that he surrounded himself with a lot of powerful people that enabled him for years, and they were able to kind of push this away for a long period of time. Now it's really started to come out of the woodwork. To me, one of the things that stands out with this story is the creep factor. I think a lot of people, especially men, especially my, I'll include myself in this, are v I don't want to hear about this, and it's not that I don't respect what these women have gone through, and it's not that I, you know, I think what they're doing takes so much amount of, of pride in order for them to be able to do this, but it's just unsettling to hear some of these stories, to hear what these young ladies at the age of 12, 13, 14, even younger than that, had to go through. To, so for me, it's very just disturbing, and it's stuff that I just don't necessarily, I get turned off by it when I see it on the television, or if I see an article about it in the New York Post. But I think going forward, I think that this is a groundbreaking case that is without a doubt going to have a big influence on a lot of what's going on, not just in sports, but throughout the rest of society, without a doubt. Last thing I'll say is this guy, Larry Nasser, it's almost like the guy is just such a creep that he's just hard to look at. You know, and I'm not trying to be funny, but it's almost like he looks like, like Pee Wee Herman. Or, it, it's almost like if you looked up the definition of a creep, he would be that person that in the, you know, because he just fits it to a T. So for me, it's just a very unsettling story. But I will say that despite the fact that it was swept under the rug for so long, fortunately now, but these young ladies taking a stand, at least it started to come out of the woodwork. And we've been able to see this story for what is what it is and see Larry Nasser for what who he is. Yeah. I wish all the ladies affected by this guy all the best as they begin to really come to terms with what happened and pick up the pieces of their lives. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Keisha, we move on to college basketball now. And Billy Preston, who is this University of Kansas basketball team student, who decided to take a page out of the Big Baller brand playbook, where he is now signing with a professional team in Bosnia. And this is according to Rivals.com. The school looked into this car accident that happened on campus, and they later sent the findings to the NCAA. Well, 18 games now into the season, and with no decision, Preston said adios to the Jayhawks, and he has now signed on with this team in Bosnia. Now, Keisha, I'm going to ask you, could we see more players start to go overseas um, to get out of these NCAA rules? Mike, I don't really foresee a big wave of players, especially the top prospects, going overseas to play to avoid going to college for one year because I you know the one thing that playing in the United States provides is exposure to these athletes and exposure can translate to big dollars because when you are on TV you get national television like a Duke <laughs> you, you you become a part of the fan psyche they feel a connection towards you and they're that's fandom will follow you towards the NBA. And if you hearken back to the draft of Kristaps Porzingis, when his name was announced as the pick for the New York Knicks, nobody really liked that. And I think part of it is because we did not know who he was. We didn't know what kind of player he was because he was in Latvia. Right? Latvia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, whereas we know about Lonzo Ball because we know, we've seen him, we know his story. And so, you know, People want to be a part of that. And not to mention, 
when you go overseas, there's no guarantee that you're going to go to a really desirable location. Bosnia, I mean, there's no disrespect to any of these countries, but I, I don't know anybody who's like, I need to go to Bosnia, I need to go to Lithuania. So I just think that the, the top prospects probably will stay in the United States. Well, I think it's idiotic. I mean, look, I can see where this kid, he just got fed up, and he says, you know what, I'm going to go off to Europe, and I'm going to pay, I'm going to play over there, because, you know, enough is enough. But in a situation where you get 18, 19-year-old kids who don't speak the foreign language of the country where they're going to, a lot of them have had either academic problems or their own conduct problems, which prevented them from playing to begin with, and a lot of them haven't necessarily had the proper direction that they've, I guarantee, I don't know this kid, Billy Preston's high school background, but I guarantee that he probably bounced around from different high school to different high school. I could be wrong about that. Now, in this circumstance, though, I think that we will see, especially with the influence that the um, balls have had, I think that we will see some players starting to do this. But because college basketball is so powerful and the AAU programs throughout this country are so powerful, I think that for the most part, they're going to be able to keep these McDonald's All-Americans and these top 100 ESPN guys in-house and playing here in the States. Yeah, life overseas is really isolating for 18, 19 year old. But don't go away because when we come back, we'll have our New York Sports Report. Welcome back to What's the 401 Sports. It is time for a New York Sports Report. Mike, I'm in a New York state of mind and particularly I am feeling Brooklyn-esque right now. And after weeks of rehabbing a knee injury, D'Angelo Russell returned to the Brooklyn Nets lineup. And in his debut, the Nets got a win over Miami Heat 101-95. to Now, Russell struggled in his debut. He only scored one point, but his teammates really uh, you know, had positive things to say about his leadership on the floor. Mike, the Nets at this time have a better win-loss record than they did last year at this time. And what do you think D'Angelo Russell's return will mean for the Nets going forward? I think it's going to be huge. At the beginning of this season, what did we think of for the Brooklyn Nets? We thought possibly another catastrophe could happen because the two main stars at the guard position, Jeremy Lin and Russell, of course, go out and they get these horrible injuries. And then, of course, you've lost Brook Lopez. Well, now what do you do? And I think that they were able to really regroup. And as you pointed out, Keisha, their record's not too shabby. They're staying in games. They're actually playing some decent defense. I think that Miami Heat win was key for them. And I think that that's going to give them some momentum. As far as them being able to get back-to-back -back wins, two, three, maybe even four or five game winning streaks, it's going to be tough because I think that if you look at their record over the course of the next month and a half or so, especially after the All-Star break, they do play a lot of tougher opponents. But I think you've got to give this team some credit because this has been a really tough time for them ever since, you know, over the course of the last couple of years. And I think that there actually is some hope now, and they're showing that in the way that they've been playing recently. I think they call that Brooklyn grit, Mike. <laughs> but one thing um, I will say about Russell's return to the lineup and it, it, is that it gives stability to the net. And that's something that Coach Kenny Atkinson really is – enjoying having because it allows him to be able to establish a set rotation of players and one thing that i've noticed from my years of watching basketball as a fan is that players seem to like routine and knowing day in and day out what their responsibilities are because it helps get them in a rhythm and when they're in a the rhythm things tend to have good things tend to happen and of course you know they are flexible because things happen. Injuries happen at any time. But I think if they had their druthers, they would prefer a more stable routine. So I think that with their determination, their their grit, a healthy lineup, you know, things can really happen. We'll see if they can catch some fire and rattle off two, three, four, five, ten wins in a row. But um, we're here for it. Well, we go across the river, Keisha, to the New York Knicks, where Christoph Przingis was not happy, and he believes that he should be an NBA All-Star. Now, do you think that he got snubbed, and does he have a point? Well, he was not named a starter, um, but he does have a chance to be a reserve for the um, All-Star. And I can see how he felt, he felt snubbed as uh, a starter, but as I mentioned before with Russell Westbrook, I mean, it's so hard because to, there's only X amount of spaces for starters, and it's hard to really jockey and determine who's better and who's worse. 
I can make a case for Joel Embiid as well as I can make a a case for Kristaps. So I I can see where he's coming from, but I don't think he'll be left out of the All Star activities. He'll be out in La La Land and getting out from the cold weather and doing All Star things and feeling the love because people they generally like Kristaps. There's really not much not to like about him. Yeah, I think if you take head-to-head -head Embiid and Przingis, I think without a doubt in the numbers and the way that they stack up, I think that Embiid is the one that's deserving to play for this All-Star game as a starter. And, of course, he still has a chance to go ahead and be, make it into the game without being a starter as a reserve. So, you know, it's been an up-and-down season for him, but I think that he's shown that uh, he, can cert he has certainly improved a lot over the course of the last couple of years since he's been in this league. So I think, I hope the best for him, but I think that, yeah, he might be down that he didn't get named a starter, but I'm sure he'll find a way, to his way to get on the team. Yeah, and part of the voting is from the fans, and fans really need to have a connection with you. And like I mentioned before, he is a gem when it comes to social media. <laughs> he right. is just really funny and has a lot of personality. So I can see that putting him over the edge over Chris Dabbs. Right. All right, Keisha, I got one for you. Let's go off topic for a moment. Larry Brown Sports is reporting that adult film, film star Stormy Daniels says that Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger walked her home after her 2006 affair with Donald Trump. Yeah. Allegedly, the day after the affair, Trump invited Daniels to a party, and Roethlisberger was there. Trump had to leave, so he asked Big Ben if he could take her home. What a classy guy. Oh, yeah. Yuck. <laughs> Who is me? Oh, anyway. <laughs> Before we go further off topic, we'll bring you back and shine our athlete spotlight on Boston Celtics fall forward Jalen Brown. Mike, Harvard University learned that Jalen Brown had visited this campus and was speaking with professors. And upon learning this, the Harvard University reached out to Brown via Twitter, inviting him to come speak to his student body about his thoughts on education. Brown accepted that inv invite, and it's good to note that Brown put his own pursuit of degree at the University of California, Berkeley, to, to enter the NBA. But he did write a thesis on the impact that institutionalized sports has on education. Now, because of Harvard, other schools are looking to have Brown come talk to his students. Mike, I bet you didn't know that Harvard is known as the Duke of the North. I did not. <laughs> there I are t-shirts to prove it. <laughs> 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 well, on that note, we have to say goodbye to you. We, you know, we just don't like it, but our producer says we have to go. But don't worry, you, keep, you can keep up with us until we meet again by liking us on Facebook, following us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribing to our YouTube channel, All at 401 Sports TV. Also, be sure to download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and TuneIn. I'm Keisha Wilson, and on behalf of Mike McDonald, we'd like to thank you for joining us, and we look forward to checking you out again.